theyeshiva.net. Please give a warm welcome to Rabbi Y.Y. Jacobson. Okay, but that's off Yiddish or off English? Okay, beide, beide, fine, relax. Relax. Yeah, I know, when I, sp when I speak in English, the Hasidim feel more sophisticated. <laughs> when I speak in Yiddish, it brings up the trauma of all the Musadrashas that you heard your whole life. So you can't even hear what I'm saying. When I speak in English, it's already fresh. Fresh energy. As I have the schus and the privilege, the schus and the privilegia, to participate in this extraordinary Suda Saida and festive Chagige and Simcha and uh, the sense of the love and the ambiance and the atmosphere in the ear brings to mind the following story. And the truth is, I was thinking, what's the most appropriate thing to say tonight at this event? And then I realized that any time of the year this would be appropriate for this event, the fact that the Suda Saida was chosen on Agba Oimer really demands for me to share this story at this event. There is a story, it's one of those old stories, but it's not very well known. Its source, for those who like to do homework, is Medrash Rabbah Shir Hashirim on the Pasuk Nagila Venismechabach. And the Medrash Rabbah tells the following story, and I want you all to think as I share this story, first of all, why he did it this way, what's the message, what's the lesson, and what's the connection to tonight? And I quote almost verbatim in English. The Medrash Rabbi Shir Hashidim says there was a couple from the city of Tzidoin, which is a coastal city on the coast of Lebanon, and they were married for 10 years, and unfortunately they were not blessed with children. So they came to Rabban Shimon Bar Yochai, and they asked him if he could arrange for a get, for a divorce. Since after 10 years being married without children, there is room for a get, with the various halachic discussions about it, which is not for now, they asked Rabbi Shimon by Yechai to arrange the divorce. Rabbi Shimon by Yechai says to them, no problem, you want to get divorced, I'll arrange the get. But I ask of you one thing, don't just get divorced. I want you to get divorced the same way you got married. You got married with a party, with a feast, but not stam. Chaval al azman. It was a party to gedenken, a mishte v'simcha on a historic level. I want you to get divorced mitoich mishte v'simcha. Usually people don't get divorced with a party. Some people, but it's not the normal way. But I want you to get divorced with a festive feast, okay? A modne psak from Arov. <laughs> I'll give you a get, but first we got to throw a party, and a big one. But Reb Shimon Bar Yechai had kepaskent, the kepaskent. So the husband and the wife went, and they arranged a huge suda. And Reb Shia Mendelovitz arranged the music, and the blip entertained, and the Mordechai mesmerized, and it was Ketoiv Leiv Hamelech Bayoyin, like all my friends here, was Kenan Zechnerstein Alten. 
So give in, cured sign is reish. Right? Chur, karpas, chelas, chavle, buds, var gomon. Okay? The only person missing is Vashti. Maybe she's here, Chvesnisht, but I'm not going to get involved. Mitoy Zov, Achesev, Hashkas Bechlei Zov, Yein Malchus Rov, Kiyad HaMelech, Hashsiya Kados, Kiyein Oynes. I don't want to mix Purim and Lagboimer, but they're connected. And so they made a party, and this is for their divorce, for their get. In the middle of the feast, in the middle of the party, he calls over his wife. He says, listen, my dear, this is our last night together. Tomorrow we're going for a get. I don't want you to just go home. You go to your father's home. You know, I'm an affluent man. I'm a man of great means. Apparently he was extremely wealthy, although the Medrash doesn't specify it. I want you to look around the house and identify the item that is most precious, most expensive, and take it with you to your parents' home. He didn't want his wife to be dependent forever on her parents' money. He wanted her to be self-sufficient, self-sustained. He wanted her to be able to be affluent. Take the most expensive item you want with you. No strings attached. Fine. As the party continued, as this party continues, the guy had to drink more. Women are usually more sober, as you can see, they're listening. And the men are usually more tipsy, because they have more emotions to repress. But we won't go there at the moment. So Bemela, he was drinking. The guy was drinking, and the manager says she concocted for him drinks that were uniquely spicy. She spiced the wine. He got pretty tipsy and he got pretty drunk. What do men do when they get tipsy and drunk? You'll see in 10 minutes, they fall asleep. That's the system, basically. They fall asleep. Her husband fell asleep. It's all in the Medrash. It's not a Rabbi YY story. Medrash Rabbi Shehashed. He fell asleep. She turned to her servants and she said, carry him in the bed to my parents' home. So middle of the night, they carry this guy to the parents' home. He wakes up in the morning, probably with a pretty heavy hangover. And you know, you wake up in your bedroom, you feel comfortable, he takes a look. Where am I? Calls his wife and says, where am I? She says, you're my parents' home. He says, what am I doing in your parents' home? How did I get here? She says, you asked me to take you here, so I took you here. He says, I never asked you to take me to my shvigar's house. Never did it happen. Never will it happen. I never asked you to take me to your parents' home. Why am I here? She said, I followed your orders. He says, what are you talking about? So she said to her husband, you told me that I should choose the most delicious, beloved, cherished, expensive, Item in the house. Ainli chayfetz yeser toiv bi'olam chutz mimcha. For me, there's nothing more precious, more endearing, more appealing, more attractive, more precious to me. Those are the words of the Medrash than you. So I took you. You said, I'm getting divorced. I should take with me whatever I want. The most precious thing. You're the only real precious thing. I took you with me for the rest of my life. Ooh. He heard this. He said, it's time to go back to Rajbi. They go back to Reb Shimon Bayechoi. And Reb Shimon Bayechoi listens to the story. And Reb Shimon Bayechoi says, Oy bazoi, is tzayt sadavinen. Time to daven. And he davens, he prays, and the couple is blessed with a child. And the Medrash concludes with these words, Lelamdoch, Ma HaKadosh Baruch Hu Poiked HaKaris, Af Tzadikim Poikedim HaKaris. And if this is how a woman celebrates her husband, you can understand how Jews celebrate God.
End of the story. I ask you, my friends, what's Pshat in the story? If Reb Shimon Bayechoi davened for them the second time, why couldn't he daven the first time? They came to him, we don't have children. Stell sich davenen. Go daven. <laughs> no. He tells them, we'll get the vo you'll get divorced, we're making a party. After the party, he goes to daven. Why couldn't he daven the first time for them? And Bechlau, what type of advice is this? You're getting divorced, it has to be with a feast. Who makes a feast? A woman once called me, I was helping her out, a use of marriage, she says she's getting divorced, and she's throwing a suda saido, I should come. I said, Rebetzin, you're getting divorced, maybe a good thing, but suda saido macht manisht. I never heard somebody, they amputated his leg. He says, Gewaldik, he's throwing a party, he's bringing Lippi, he's bringing Mordechem and David, he's bringing Rabbi Why, why? They had to amputate your foot fine, it saved your life. But you'd have to know when to throw a party. Some people lose perspective. It's a painful thing, even if it's necessary. Chemotherapy could be necessary, but you don't celebrate the opportunity, etc. Reb Shimon Bayechoi says, go make a party. What's the Havon of the Maise, Tayyid When I came in here to this room tonight, I think, I felt some of the energy of this story. I want to explain to you the story. And this is a story in Medrash Rabbah. This is not a, a contemporary Maise of the, some th uh, pop therapist that's a Chayzge The couple, like many couples, were goal-oriented. They were very practical. We're married, but why are we married? We're married for one purpose. The purpose is, what do they always say at Sheva Brachas? So Stalin, yeah, what do they say? Yerlicha, Yiddish, Doiris, it's all for the kids. Nine months later, there's no carriage, right? What are you doing here? Who are you? You saw the video a little while ago? And it's much more dramatic. I don't have to explain many people sitting in this room. But I'm coming. A few months ago, I was at a Shabbaton with a few hundred couples who are dealing with infertility. I met a woman there at 15, 15 miscarriages over 15 years. And I'm speaking to them. What am I supposed to say? One of the most painful things is your nephews and nieces are marrying off children every night. The mitzvah tans goes till 4 o'clock in the morning. They come home plotting from jealousy and then they feel guilty that they're jealous and that they're angry and they're upset. Because in some communities, if you don't have children, nobody knows why you're alive. The whole purpose of marriage is next generation. Everyone always says, it's not for you, it's for the kinder. The kind is for the kinder. I always ask, when is anybody ever going to do something for themselves? Somebody once said, my mother never served. We always ate leftovers. Always leftovers. We're still look, looking for the original. It's always the children, the children, the children, the children, and the children for their kids, for their kids, for their kids. I want to know who's going to be that child who's going to say, the buck stops here. <laughs> so this couple, they don't have kids. What's the point? Let's get divorced. Can't come to shul. Can't go to bar mitzvah. There's no carriage. You can't go out for coffee with your friends because all they talk about is the kids and the earaches and the virus and the vaccination and this doctor and this school and this issue. What's there to talk about? Let us, let's get divorced. Reb Shimon Bayechai saw this and he realized there's a blockage in this relationship. People don't understand what marriage is anymore. They don't even believe that you can have a good marriage. Shimon Bayechai realized they don't know what marriage is. They don't believe that there could be a marriage where there is actual trust and love that vibrates between a couple that is not conditional on what you produce. And Rashbi needs them to go to that place. And this is not a psychologist in 2017. This is a Medrash Rabbi in Shir Hashidim. The Halik is Svurim. So what does he do? He says, you guys got to get divorced. I want there to be a party. And in the middle of the party, as the guy gets tipsy, and they're about to separate, 
suddenly they discover how much they love each other. Sometimes you need to say goodbye to realize how much you care about somebody. Some of you know this with your children. Your child was in your home. He was the biggest troublemaker. He gave you the biggest headaches. As some stupid fathers like to tell their child, I wish you were never born. I know such fathers. It's disgusting. It's horrible, but they do it. But then when their child disappears from their life, they're never comforted. Sometimes, we don't realize how much we're connected to somebody until we don't have them anymore. Rashbi said, for you guys to realize what you mean to each other, you got to separate. And during that feast, when he gets a little drunk, he turns to his wife and he says, take the most precious object. And she takes him home and she says, there's nothing more precious than you. When they come back to Rashbi, Rashbi says, now I could daven. Now there's a relationship. Now there's a marriage. Now there's love. Now there's trust. When there's real love, when there's real trust, when there's a real connection, miracles could happen. Now I could daven. Now the tzaddik could be poiked akaris, like a Kaddish Baruch Hu could be poiked akaris. And I will add, this is not just a story about marriage and biological children. It's also a story about Judaism. There are two types of Yiddishkeit. One is a Yiddishkeit that is all about what do I got to do to get a ticket to Olam Haba, to eat the Levyasan and Shaira Bar and not get fried in the eternal barbecue of Gehenna. My whole relationship with God has nothing to do with God. It has to do with my schar and my oinish. In other words, my Judaism is narcissistic, to quote the Maharal. And then there's a marriage, and then there's a relationship with Hashem that is actually genuine. Imagine somebody tells me, you know why I stay married? I stay married because who's going to cook for me like my wife? Who's going to do the laundry? You know why I don't cheat? Because I'm going to get punished. That's the only reason. Mela, but it's a pretty pathetic relationship. And yet when it comes to Judaism, we say, why do I do this? Because I'm afraid. I'm, I want a reward. Okay. It's a very low, low level of a relationship. And Rashbi Mare de Pnimius Hatoira wanted a genuine relationship, one that comes from the core, one that is authentic, one that is powerful. And I have to say tonight, we celebrate such a great miracle, but the miracle is not only the miracle of the baby. Before the miracle of the baby, Hadassah Miriam, you have the miracle of a couple, of a couple that displayed and displays. So you don't have to applaud, it's fine. Ichret pnimius, nishchit soinius. Applause is found in Azachim. A couple that displayed and displayed and displays that type of bonding. And Reb and Naomi, I want to give you tonight a message, but I think everybody could use this message. And I'm going to ask you a question that you should have asked in fourth grade. I don't know why you didn't. Maybe you did, and they told you, "Das was the fragen by the manestan that says mit andere chachamim du goylam." Maybe, but if you didn't ask this question tonight, we'll ask this question. Listen, women and men, listen to my question. Rachel, like you guys, waited for a child for many years. She told her husband, "Im ayin meisa anoichi." You could kill me. I'm dead. She's blessed with a child. What would you do when you're blessed with a child? What would you name that child? She named him Yosef. One of the reasons is, Asaf Eloikim Es Cherposi. Hashem Hat Eingesammelt. He took away, he eliminated, he obliterated, and it's nicht gemacht, my cherpe, my busha, my shame, my shande. Frecht Rashi, what type of shande did Rachel have? What type of shande, what type of cherpa did Rachel have? And you remember Rashi's answer? Half of a fella. Rashi says, till I didn't have a child, yeah, what happens when the shviger comes into the house and there's no child and the kitchen is messy? What does the shviger say? Zinishkem balabasta. 
What if there's ice cream all over the couch? The Shriga says, I don't know how my son is going to survive with such a chaotic, disorganized woman. But when you have a baby, you blame everything on the baby. So, Rashi, till Yosef was born, Nebach, everything was blamed on Rachel. But now Yosef was born, they said, Me shavar klize. Who broke this glass? Ah, Yosef, the little terrorist. Who ate up all the chocolate that I bought for Shabbos? Yosef, the little ganev. Who destroyed this beautiful couch and chandelier and bed? And why is this house a chazerstal worse than a horse stable? Yosef, the little, 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 little troublemaker. I'm a chaya, you blame everything on Yosale, on YY, on Yosef, and Sagit. It's wonderful. That's why she names him Yosef. Reboy Noishalaylo! Imagine Yoeli and his wife, they have a baby. They say, you know why we're happy? He gets up and says, you know why we're happy? Baruch Hashem, now if the house is dirty, now if there's brechats everywhere, now if the house is not balabatish, for the next 15 years, we have who to blame. Really? That's what's exciting you? Rachel? Rachel? Good question, no? Huh? You're not going to agree it's a good question. I have one more question. I don't understand. She's lying or saying the truth. Who Taka broke the Kli? If she broke the Kali and she's blaming Yosef, that's the worst bush in the world. Elamai, Yosef broke the Kli. So what does that have to do with her Kherpa? I'm going to tell you Pshat, Rabbi Yoel and Naomi. I'm going to tell you Pshat. Rachel was a very deep woman. And this is what you guys have to remember and all of us have to remember after this party is over. Rachel knew, I'll tell you how human nature works. When you don't have something, you cry, you wait, you pray, you hope. When you have it, you get it, you're excited. But you know what happens sometime down the line? You take, we all take things for granted. We become used to it. The Jews had the mon for 40 years. They took it for granted. We have children, Baruch Hashem. We take them for granted. You wake up healthy, you take it for granted. You could walk, you could run, you could lift your hands, you could communicate, you could think, you're conscious, you could listen, you could communicate, you could speak. We take it for granted. We take for granted that 40 trillion cells in our body are functioning every single moment and a hundred million neurons in our brain are making a hundred million decisions every millisecond. It's a miracle, but we take it for granted. Rachel knew she might also take it for granted. And you know when we take it for granted? When life becomes hard. So what did Rachel do? She said, I'm going to name him Yosef. You know why? He's going to be three years old. He's going to come home from Cheder, right, in a bad mood. I'm going to be exhausted. It's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. He's going to say, Mommy, I want orange juice. I'll say, let Mommy, zol Mommy ungissen. No, he has to pour himself. Takes the orange juice, and a moment later, the whole carpet is bedecked with orange juice. A few minutes later, he complains that his ear is hurting, and you have to run to the doctor. He has an earache. That's when people become extremely stressed out. So Rachel said, when I'm going to look at the glass all over the floor, when I'm going to look at the mess all over the house, I'm going to remind myself and say, Mishavar Kliza, who broke this glass? Who spilled this juice? Who made this house so dirty and smelly? Who? Who? This great curse in my life. Why is it? Because I have a child. Because I have a Yosef. Rachel wanted to make sure that throughout life, as different stressful situations come up, she never ever forgets to remember why is this stressful. Why am I up at night? Why can't I sleep? Because I was blessed with such a blessing. 
a woman came to me. She was telling me I was shalom bias. She says, my husband, I mom, she's the worst. I say, what does he do? Because I'm old head and I expected to hear from Zdoim Vamoira. He texts me that he's leaving the office in three minutes and it's never true. I said, oh, welcome to America. <laughs> welcome. When he says three minutes, it means in three hours he's going to start thinking about leaving the office. She says, really? I say, really? I said, but I get so angry. I get so angry. I say, I understand. But I just want you to think as you get angry, just remember, you're angry because your husband is not home yet. You have a husband and you have a husband that you're looking forward to see him. Just remember that. You're having challenges with your child in school. Wow. But you have a child that you can have challenges with. You're having a challenge with your health but you're alive, you're vibrant. You're having a challenge with Parnassa. Somebody tells me, Rabbi Jacobson, I'm stressed. I have so many things to do. I said, Baruch Hashem, trust me, it's much better than the people who call me and say, I have nothing to do. You're in demand. There's something so beautiful about your life. Rachel said, I will never, ever forget to put things in perspective. And tonight... I congratulate you for putting things in perspective for all of us. All of us who were zoiche to be blessed with so many blessings, maybe without so much struggle in this area, to never ever take these things for granted, to always see the big picture, to never get stuck in the quagmire of pettiness and in the pressure of the moment, but to always focus on the tremendous bracha that you have if you have a oh, one child, never mind, two children, three children, many children, yes, there's agmas nefesh, there's pain, there's tsar gidl bonim, but you know why there's tsar gidl bonim? Because you have children. People who are alone in the world don't have tsar gidl bonim. People who are lonely don't have problems with their relationships. They have other problems. A guy came to a therapist. He had a split personality. And he wanted a group discount. That's called chutzpah. I think there's one more celebration tonight with which I want to conclude. You've heard this story 90,000 times. It's coming out of both of your ears. And if I say it once more, you're going to expire and turn into pumpkins. But I promise you, Rabbi Waiwai will tell you the story the way you never heard it. So I'm going to now clean up a trauma. Every yeshiva bacher or girl who grew up in whatever school it was, by Syakov, by Surah, by Suruchel, Benoist Sans, Benoist Dis, Benoist Das, I don't want to discriminate. But any bais, 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 and you were valedictorian. Or any yeshiva, Talmud, Torah, Chaydi, you grew up, you knew when it came to Svira, they hacked that iron in your cup with a nail with a nail and a hammer, that 24,000 students of Akiva perished, and you always made to feel that you would have been one of those 24,000 students, the way you behave. The fact you stayed alive is tzorich iyun gadl. We're still wondering. Okay. So when people start hearing, like, most Hasidim I know shut down emotionally. Don't give me one of those speeches about Talmidi Rebbe Akiva. And yet, I'm going to take the chutzpah, and I'm going to reflect on another side of the story that people don't realize, and you will see how refreshing the story is. You know why? Because if you would have been told the story the way you're going to hear it tonight, you would have avoided a lot of problems in your life. What did Rebbe Akiva do after he lost 24,000 students? Anybody knows? What did he do? Did he give up? Did he say, this is a tragic joke. He came from non-Jews. He was a self-made man. Till 40, he didn't know olive bays. He wasn't part of the system, Chevra. At the age of 40, he goes to learn olive bays. He becomes the God of Hadar. 24 years, he mentors 24,000 students, and he loses every one of them. What's the normal emotional response? What would a therapist tell you? Jump off the Brooklyn Bridge or the Tappan Zee Bridge? Which one? Tranquilizers or Prozac? What would the therapist tell you? But Rabbi Akiva is Nishna Spal Givar. And the Gemara says in Yavama Samach Beis, he started all over again. You know with whom? With five students. Now here's the interesting thing. 
The 24,000, we don't know even one name. Do you know that? We don't know even one name of the 24,000 students. The five students, we know their names. We know what they taught. We know what they represented in Jewish history. The Gemara goes through in Sanhedrin. Stam Mishnah, Reb Meir, Stam Toisefta, Stam Brisa. They go through all the five students that Rabbi Akiva raised. The Kulu Aliba de Rabbi Akiva. These five capture the whole Messiah of Torah Shabbal Peh. We know their names. We know their Torah. We know their story. We know their teachings. 24,000. They didn't only die. Their memory died. What was the difference? My friends, the difference was one difference. The first group were intellectual giants, but they were judgmental people. Their Torah did not refine their character. They were selfish. They were narcissistic. They were judgmental. They looked very, very religious. They knew kola kula, but they had no respect for somebody who's going through a different journey. Did you ever meet such people? They're unbelievable religious on other people's cheshbon. They don't have space in their heart for struggle. They don't have space in their heart for people who are different. They don't have space in their heart for people who are going through a crisis. They don't have space in their heart for anybody who is not conforming exactly to their expectations, even though this person has a different type of neshama. It's my way or the highway, and if it's not my way, you burn in Gehenna forever. Those 24,000 students were brilliant people, but they are not remembered in the history of the Jewish people. They're forgotten. Sadly, they're forgotten. It's not a small statement like Nagu covered Zebazah. It reminds me of the story. You know the story? You know the Maisa? You don't know? <laughs> there, was a, <laughs> there was a good, it's a Gishmaka Maisa. There was a Gvir. A big Kamtsin, very stingy man. And a poor man came to him and he said, I didn't eat in two days. Could you give me a little food? He says, I don't give food to poor people. You can go to Hekdish, you can go to the Shtibul and they'll give you food. So he says, I can't, I didn't eat, I'm going to die. Give me from the garbage can. So he takes from the garbage can leftovers of Shabbos. There was an old salty piece of fish and he gives it to the poor man and he eats it he gobbles it up immediately and it was so salty and bitter that he fainted so the man calls Hatzala and they rush him to the hospital the next day he tells his wife I can't come home tonight she says why not he says I have a big mitzvah to do she says what he says you remember we had a guest yesterday I gave him a piece of fish Nebach as Givarin Krank there's a mitzvah of Bikr Chaylam so I have to go to the hospital so he goes to the hospital for Bikr Chaylam the next day he calls his wife he says I can't come home today she says why he says you remember the Chayla Nebach he died there's a big mitzvah to go to his Levaya I go to his Levaya the next day he tells his wife there's a big mitzvah of Nicham Avelim he left the assignment I have to go to pay a shiva call he comes home from the shiva call and he's smiling from ear to ear. His wife never saw him so happy in his life. She says, I don't understand you. What's so exciting? You're coming, Nebach, from a Nicham Avelim. Was bist du And here you'll forgive me, you guys. I have to say it in Yiddish, even though you have issues with Yiddish, but some jokes only in Yiddish. He tells his wife, Wie kann ich nicht sein besimcha? Gib a kuk, gib a kick. Wie viel mitzvahs? Ich hab abgetan mit ein verstinkene, gesalzene Stickelfisch. Fear for the greste mitzvahs. Hachnusses orchem, bicker choilem, halvuyes hameis, in nichem aweilen. We do you have a better deal, better oilam haba. One smelly piece of fish and four of the greatest mitzvahs. My friends, for some people, that's what Judaism looks like. They're collecting mitzvahs. Yoimam v'layla for oilam haba. Trach vegen at zweiten yidin. Trach vegen at zweiten yidin. You think God is a narcissist like you? Think about another person's heart, about another person's soul, about another person's pain, just because they don't look mamish like you, and they don't scream just like you, and they don't have your feelings. Talmidei Rebbe Akiva were brilliant people, but they lacked the sensitivity the geschmack in Avos Yisrael, the understanding that a Yid who doesn't have a geschmack in Toivet Hananda Yidin, 
A person who walks around judgmental all day can't have a real shaykhis to Torah, can't have a real shaykhis to Hashem. It's like I come over, imagine you come over tonight to the Bioil and you say, the Bioil, I want to tell you something. You I love, but your daughter gefelt menished. He's going to look at you and say, listen, if you want a relationship with me, you're going to have to develop a liking to my daughter. Venafshi kshura benafshoi. We come to Hashem and we say, you, Rebbein Hashem, you I love, but your children I hate. This one I hate, that one I hate. God can't listen to you. Tell me, I love you, Rabbi Wara, I hate your kids. You hate my kids, get out of my life. Doesn't work that way. Lainagu covered Zeba Zem meant they couldn't carry the Messiah of Torah. The Noyam Ali Melech writes, Rabbi Shmuel Oimer, Bishloish Esrei Midis, Hatoyer Nidreshes. That's the piece of davening you get into a bad mood by. You remember? Bishloish Esrei Midis, Hatoyer Nidreshes. But you're not going to get into a bad mood anymore. You know why? Because I'm going to tell you what the Noyam Ali Melech says. He says, Bishloish Esrei Midis, Hatoyer Nidreshes. Only a Jew who cultivates in his own life the Yud Gimel Midis Harachamim, Er Ken Darshan and Torah. Somebody who has the Yud Gimel Midis, Hatoyre Nidreshes, by M Darshan Zach Torah. He chaps Torah. He has the Emes of Torah. That's Torah. The five students of Rabbi Akiva were only five, but they changed Jewish history forever. Because they understood that the essence of Yiddishkeit is working on yourself, working on your ego, becoming a humble human being in the presence of infinity, and seeing the God in every person, which happens when you could see the chelik elekami mal in yourself. That is the journey I feel our Bali Simcha have cultivated over so many years, and what they bring to the table, which is why everybody, and I know things are not always so simple and glott as they look here in this room. I know some things have aliyahs, viridis, and some relationships and families have been tested. But the celebration of tonight is a Yiddishkeit that is real. It's Bishloish Esrei Midis Hatayr Nidreshes. If Judaism turns you into a judgmental person, you are not connected to the truth of Yiddishkeit. Look at the fact. The Baal Shem Tev, the Rebbe Reb Zisha, the Belitzek Baditsheva, the Belimelech of Lezhensk. These were the greatest Yirish Shemayim who lived, maybe in history, some of the greatest. They should have been the most judgmental people in history. They were the most loving Jews in history. Why? Or as the Svasemis puts it, since we dealt with Purim and Lagabayim, we can go to Pesach. Svasemis says, why do you burn the candle of B'dikas Chometz? I know why you burn the bag. I know why you burn the bread. I know why you burn the spoon. I know why you burn the feather. Why do you burn the candle? And you know what this Vasema says again? This has to be said in Yiddish. He says, Eimetze, was ein ganze tachlis in Leben, is to gefin in chametz umetum, is er alein ashtikel chametz. So tonight, you got it? Pretty good. It doesn't mean there's no chametz. It means if your entire purpose in life is to find the chametz everywhere in the house, why don't you look in the mirror? You are a piece of chametz. And you got to go to be a chametz. And therefore, I say to you tonight, we celebrate, I think, these three major points. The miracle that Rashbi taught us that comes with such a beautiful marriage. The commitment never to take our miracles for granted. Asaf Elikim Karpasi. And the appreciation of a Yiddish guy that is filled with Midas, with Ava, with Anova, with Emes, and with Bittel. And tonight I bless the mother and the father, the grandparents, the siblings, the friends, and the relatives, that you should go from Simcha to Simcha, Vairikoisilach and Bracha Ad Blidai. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Rabbi Y.Y. Jacobson. Thank you. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.